Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi, Untold Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys is brought to you in partnership with Sagicor. Buying a home? Score big with a Sagicor Bank Mortgage. It's easy. Find your property, apply for your Sagicor Bank Mortgage, get your keys in no time, and you're home! MasterCard. Make online purchases in a safe way with Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life. She's been giving us bops since she was just a tot, but now as an evolved woman, she's giving us bangers like never ever before. Today, you meet a whole other side of Denique. Lay back for my mind on my money on my money on my mind. Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danique, how are you? I'm good. How I are you, Jens? I'm well. I am so, so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. As in, I think I'm bursting. <laughs> Because I know. I haven't seen you since a new baby. I know. I feel like the last time we saw each other, we were on a set together. Mm -hmm. And and of course, our conversations are always ocean deep. Girl. <laughs> ocean. Ocean deep. deep. Like Mariner's Trench deep. Oh, oh, look at you. Ah. Is that where we're going today? Yeah, probably. Oh, well, let's we're see. We're I calling. mean, well, you know, with you and I, it, just, it flows. It flows. It flows. It flows. But on a serious note, how are you how is Danique I'm good Danique is good oh my god I feel so icky talking about myself in a third person yeah yeah but I am good I'm good I'm in such a beautiful space mentally emotionally physically I'm back mm. I mean I don't think I went anywhere but you know I'm back I'm back to being me I'm back to Danique being at the forefront I've tapped into a new level of who I am I've I'm uninhibited you know, I, I'm, I'm releasing the layers of myself that I was afraid to release before. You know, I'm just in this new space. You know, I had my kids. I did all that. Yeah. Now it's game time. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, can I cuss on camera? No, we, we're not going to do that. Not that kind of show. Um, There's so many things you said a while ago that I want to unpack. Let's go. The first being, you kind of hinted at it. Not that you went anywhere, but... You kind of went somewhere. I did. Where did you go? Where were you? What was happening in your world? Because we didn't see you for a little while as we, as prominently as you were before. Yeah. No, I decided to take a conscious break from music. Yeah. I had to because I felt like where I was going wasn't where I wanted to go. One. Mm. Two, I didn't know where I wanted to go anymore. And it was right. very confusing for me. And for the first time in my life at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do and I was okay. I was okay. I was like, okay, yeah. you know what? I'm going to figure it out no matter what. But I need time away. So I need to not have the public pouring into me. Yeah. I need to not have people outside my space pouring into me. I need to take this time to pour into me and just kind of see what else life has in store because mm -hmm. I, I, I was really tunnel visioning yeah. where music was concerned. You know, I, I came in the, in the business young and I was just really focusing. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I accomplished a lot. Yes. You know, I've, I had a lot of successes, but Jens, I really, really needed to take the time to just pull back, yeah. just pull back the reins. Okay, who are you going to be next? It's like, it, it, it's like I was transitioning. Yeah. And, and, and... It, I just didn't know. I didn't know where to go. Do I go up? Do I go down? Do I go left? Do I go right? So I just decided to stay center. Mm. Just stay center and pour into myself. Mm -hmm. You mentioned coming into the business young. You were tiny. With braces. So maga. You're and <laughs> mature. And a big old head. I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you could never be. What? You wicked. Girl, I was a bobblehead. <laughs> Sasha used to call me Bibo Lady. <laughs> got more head than she got body. But it, it didn't bother me. 
it didn't bother me. You know why it didn't bother me? Shady. <laughs> Tell me why. Let me tell you why it didn't bother me yet. Because when I was in high school, I was I had really bad low self-esteem. Yeah. So in high school, they used to actually call me team head because I was so skinny and my head was so big and I used to be a little tomboy. So they used to call me team head and it used to bother me. And my mom used to always tell me what other people do is none of your business. What other people do and say about you, don't let it have an effect on you. So Word. I tried I, back then I tried to turn the hurt into you know it took a while so it's like when i met sasha and she started doing that i was kind of in that transitioning phase where i was like that's kind of cool i'm gonna own it you know and and, and not yeah. even that she made it so fun like every yeah. time she saw me you know it's like vivo lade gamo hey there she got body <laughs> and we used to dance and just make, exactly <laughs> just make a whole vibe out of it but yeah. that was um you know it helped me in that way so i always try to pick little lessons out of life you know where that's concerned and see how it can help me with whatever I'm going through, mm -hmm. even if I'm not going through anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where did you go to school? Where did you grow up? What were you like? Oh, wow. It's this kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in Montego Bay. Never lived there. I was born in Brandon Hill. Uh, my mom and dad, my dad's dad is from Montego Bay. Okay. Um, we were all, my brother, my sister, and I, we were all born at the same maternity center. My father wanted to oh, keep consistency, wow. tradition, my parents. This is why we all have the initials DDW. Um, oh, well had. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> consistency, tradition, but I grew up in Westmoreland, <coughs> Ferris, Westmoreland, right at the bridge, if anybody knows it. Um, and then I went to Elite New Westmore Prep. Then New Westmore Prep got shut down. I went to Elite Prep. <laughs> and then I went to El Instituto de Mandevilla Prep in Mandeville. I'm sorry, I said one. Yeah. You, you speak a huh? so, <laughs> The name of the school is actually El Instituto de Mandevilla. The owner, the principal, she studied in Cuba and she of was course. so in love with Cuba that she came back and started the school, school and named it oh, El Instituto wow. de Mandivia Preparatory. So we used to just call it El Instituto. Done. We're not tie up with tongue and <laughs> cut up with mouth for nobody. <laughs> um, and then I went to Bel Air. I got a, a half scholarship to go to Bel Air and my parents thought it would have been a better fit than anywhere else. So. Went You're to Bel Air. A country girl. I'm a proper true country girl, true. true bred country girl. You climb tree, girl. Yes. You what kind of thing that all the time? You yeah. used to all eat mud. I'm sorry. Hold up. Now is that a, that's, a, that's not a country thing, you know? It's because I have a confession. Thing. Oh, what did you do? You used to make mud pie. Yes. <laughs> I don't think it's a country thing. <laughs> Listen, we'll get Willie bowl and put it in the mud and stir it round, girl. Cake. There we go. Come on now. There we go. You do a, like you create you creating your own cooking show. Thank you. No, and you talk mm -hmm. to the flowers. You understand. You, you understand. Listen, the yeah. mountain ringworm I used to go inside with my poor mother. Oh. She was just so stressed <laughs> out every single time. Because that's always, and we had a river, but when we're living in Westmore, in Ferris, oh, there was a river oh, running in the backyard. That. Yeah, it was so beautiful. It wasn't deep enough, but it was just right. It Most of the time, it was too wade cold. in the water. Well, no, there was no wading. Oh, just rock them chop <laughs> <laughs> The rocks so, would definitely <laughs> tear up your legs. But it was just a nice space to be, just listening to it. From then, mm -hmm. I had a, re a genuine love for water. Mm -hmm. Genuine love, just listening to the river. I just sit on a rock and just, I mean, at that, as young as we, we left Ferris when I was 11 I believe so at that age I mean I don't really have no deep thoughts like that right, but right. I do remember just loving there's this really big rock kind of slanted and I just sit on it and just listen to the river run it was beautiful and the river produced these beautiful purple lilies oh gorgeous yes and I mean like it would create a bed just covering like half of the river mm. beautiful sounds like paradise yeah, to me yeah when did you realize that music was a thing for you Oh, wow. I used to put on concerts for my grandma. Now, my grandma, my mom's mom, was my favorite human being in the entire world. God rest her soul. Oh. She passed when I was 12. Hmm. And that was the first time that I realized I didn't understand death. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't understand it because when she passed, my mom was so what I know now to be strong. At that time, I thought my mom was a robot. Right. Because she didn't cry. She didn't do anything. But now I realize that she was just being strong for herself and mm -hmm. for us and probably for her mom. And, you know, we had conversations about this and she admitted to me that she was it, it hit her at first. But why it never hit her so hard was because they knew, you know, the doctor told them she was going to have an aneurysm. And no, it was some I think it was an angina of the heart, something okay. to that effect. But she was older, too. She right. was 84 um, when she passed or 83. 
Um, so they, mommy said she kind of expected it, so it never hit her that hard. Yeah. But, you know, she just knew she had to be strong. But grandma, grandma used to always want to put on concerts for her. Lick low me and kill me dead. I was Aliyah, you know. Listen You now. couldn't tell me not when I straight, when mommy straightened my hair and I swoop it. Did you do it? Did you go across that? Yes. Oh, boo. snap. <laughs> and I put on little concerts and then I was so bad. as a little diva because I had a cousin who could not sing to save <laughs> her life <laughs> no mommy in the end day, off key <laughs> off beat her she, her voice had this raspy <sighs> and every time i'm singing she would always join in and i'd be like you better stop if you don't stop <laughs> so but grandma and then i had another aunt auntie me who always puts in on concerts for her she passed when I was a little older, when I was about 20, 21. Yeah. But I've always had this innate love for singing. I used to have a little boom box that you could record on. Yes, man. Girl, cassette. Yes, man. And man. me, I record a cappella to, you know, I'm like, mommy, didn't you keep any of these tapes? She's like, no, I don't know where they went. We moved and, you know, things got that. I used to literally sit down and run off a whole cassette, two sides, oh, just singing a cappella. Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Britney Spears. Name it. Britney Spears was my first album that I ever bought. Baby, one more time. I was going to say. My own money. Listen now. And Pink. Um, you remember that Pink album? Uh, there, there you go. go. Look at <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought, I saved my lunch money and I bought those two albums for myself. The first albums I ever owned. And yo, I just always, and especially 90s R&B, because mm -hmm. my sister used to blast her. Like, she looked like she's a man problem from Shea Picnic. <laughs> I don't know. She used to always play 90s R&B and I just found this. I just love the runs. And you know, when you got that run earlier, you hit that run what earlier. What you talking about? Ah. When I did my... <laughs> Watch how you miss now. Mm. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but you know I did it. You did. You know I and did you it. you got it on point because, listen, on point. I actually did my... It's Danique. Ah, you got it on Thank God, because... I cannot believe I'm so excited about a run. <laughs> Yo, it's because you know how bad I am. No, stop it. That you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> she's been working. <laughs> I've been, been working. Practicing. <laughs> I'm over here. But so you're you're performing for your grandma, you're performing for your aunt, mm -hmm. your cousin. She didn't even go one side. Mm. You're already able to identify that she didn't sound like what an unkey sound should be like. Always. When what was the moment for you where you were like, you know what? This is a thing I actually love. Yeah. I actually want to pursue this. So, so throughout, like I'm, I'm singing all the time, school barbecues, everything. I actually won a competition at Bel Air. It was the first competition they ever put on. And I won. <laughs> Thank you. I, was so, I, I didn't think I was going to win <laughs> because for my last song, so I sang Whitney Houston, Run to You. There's another song in the middle, can't remember, but the last song was Turn Your Lights Down Low, Bob Marley and Lauren Hill. And my do the Lauren Hill part, girl, he wants to make catch the hat from my head Same and way. rapping, you know. Yeah. But there's another girl, her voice was so beautiful. She had a beautiful rasp. She kind of sounded like Amy Winehouse. Mm. <clears throat> and she sang Christina Aguilera's Beautiful. Remember that song? I do. That was a hard song to sing. And she, Yendi, she nailed it. When I tell you, said the girl. So me start fret. I'm like, no, I'm not going to win. <laughs> but I won. <laughs> Talk to me nice. <laughs> yes, I won. Apparently, I had more. Um, there's just more variety right, to my performance. Right. So I was really happy about that. But y'all, her voice is sick. I remember her to this day. <laughs> um, and school barbecues and everything. I went into the studio for the first time when I was 13. My cousin took me in there, recorded my first song. I never went anywhere, of course. Do you remember what your first song was? It was... Um, I, I, I see you. Oh, it, it was very bad. It was bad for a 13-year-old to be singing this. But it was actually a song that was written for... They wanted to see if I could sing it. Right. So I went, tonight's the night. I'm feeling right. Your body's looking tight. I'm feeling you. You're feeling me. I feel like I'm on ecstasy. So when I was grown up, I realized that, what are you doing at 13 singing that song, young lady? You know what, though? <laughs> you sound good singing it. <laughs> oh, thank you. you Never sound saw good. like that back then. <laughs> I can't believe you remember it. That's I do. what's up. I do. And I used to rap um, little May songs. You won't see me. Poor me. I cannot rap to save my life. But I was just so into music. music and trying music to find your sound and yeah. navigate and see where you felt most comfortable. Exactly. So I 
don't want to throw up your question. So no, when I decided that I was going to do it for real, for real, I actually wanted to do media. When, so when I graduated from Bel Air, I wanted to do media. Um, I couldn't do UE. They said I needed Cape mm -hmm. to go to UE. So I was like, okay, let me do one year or six form. They said I needed two. Still try to apply anyway. I got in for language, com, and society. Didn't want to do that. I really, really wanted to go to Caramac. Um, but I also got in to UTEC for tourism management. Of course, daddy's going to push that because right. that makes more sense. That's right. business. That's this, this, this. Did it for a year. He told me I had to maintain a certain GPA. I did. I think my GPA was 3.4. And I was just like, yeah, dad, I don't want to do this. I, I really don't want to do this. And, yeah. you know, I know I put him in a pickle, you know, because he's like, you know, you know, I've already paid for the year. And I'm like, I know that. And I'm so sorry, but I promise I'll make it up to you. This is not where my heart is. It's mm. not. So <clears throat> that was the beginning of my dad not talking to me. Really? For four years. He was just like, no, mm -mm, don't know you. I don't really? want to be associated with you. I mean, I don't know if he actually said those things out loud. I right, don't know he did, but that's how it, fe it felt. And I, you, I had to use that as fuel to keep going. Like I had to prove him wrong. So it was from that, that, okay, from high school, yes. But that moment was when I realized that I always have to prove people wrong because for some reason, when I say I want to do something and when I show that I can do something, it's just everybody keeps trying to tell me it can't happen. Mm. It wasn't until I was much older that I realized that's, that's, that's just people projecting their insecurities on me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But back then it was like, you know, I was sad about it, I was hurt about it, I was lashing out. I was just doing things I normally wouldn't do because growing up, I was so afraid of my parents. <laughs> the most I probably did was sneak out a few times out of the house. That's it. No, girl, you're never afraid enough. Because... No, no, girl. <laughs> but I never sneak out and go nowhere, like no party. I snuck out and go to my best friend's house across the road. <laughs> so I don't think that counts like yeah, twice. Yeah. But mommy... My mom, thankfully, so my dad was a disciplinarian, okay. but mommy was a cool one. Okay. So she wasn't that cool. So she wasn't going to make me get away with murder. <laughs> but she was cool enough to know that, okay, she's a teenager. Right. She needs certain releases. She needs to be in certain spaces. Um, and yeah, dad just decided that, no, I'm not going to do this. I don't agree with it. This don't make no sense. This is a music industry. But then I also realized, too, that he just didn't know anything about it. Right. You know, he's not in this space. You know, my dad is kind of wired a certain way. And that's just who he is. Right. And this is who I am. And I have to find my footing and I have to just be who I need to be. And I took a leave of absence from UTEC and just dived right in. <laughs> As you are now in the space, mm -hmm. are you saying, yeah, no, I can do this. This looks like it's promising. I can see myself going somewhere. Or are you saying... Darn, I probably should have listened to my father. This thing is so much harder than I thought. This thing is not going to take me anywhere. Because of how thick my ego is or how thick my pride is, I have never said I should have listened to my father. Got you. Never. That's honest. Yeah, never. Because I don't believe from a, from a, from even that time, Yens, when I was so young, I did never ever believe in regrets. I honestly always believe that everything happened for a reason. Like there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason yeah. why you chose to do that. Cause I believe in choice. I feel like people don't realize that we have the power because we have the power of choice. And the choices that you make determine where you go. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, every single choice that I've made has led me here. And I feel like if I think to myself, oh, if I could go back and change something, but if I change one little thing, then I change everything else that happened That's after right. it. So it, it, it don't make a sense to me. So, you know, I, I, I don't have regrets. Yeah. I don't have regrets. I have moments where I think back and say, okay, maybe I could have done something differently, but I don't want to change it. I don't regret that it happened. I don't regret that it, that what it did. I probably regret who I was in the moment, but at the same time, I don't regret what happened because it taught me something. I and always try to find lessons in little, too. yeah, I always try to find lessons like accountability is so important. <sighs> girl i believe in accountability and, people and they are literally allergic allergic no allergic like they get hives and it's truly <laughs> where your biggest growth will come when you are accountable you and know people hear me use that word and even my friends they'll be like you know their their defense is always but i didn't do anything wrong and i'm like you, you're it doesn't mean that you're wrong accountability just means that you recognize the part that you played in the situation that's it a word that's it a word. that's it there's so many situations that i've been in i'm not wrong but guess what I played a part in it leading to where it is now. That's right. You know, so That's we right. have to be able to kind of sit back and realize, like I literally, sometimes I'll just sit down and step outside of myself 
and just look back. I try to do it at least twice for the year, like consciously, just step out of myself and look at myself and say, okay, what have you accomplished in the last six months? What have you done? What could you have done better? I don't, I don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mom brain. Oh. <laughs> By the way, this is a thing. <laughs> this is such a thing. That mull. People do. There you go. <laughs> I don't like to mull on, on, on yeah, things yeah. of the past, but I want to recognize them yeah. because they're going to, well, they're what's going to allow me to not make the same mistake That's right. in the That's future. Right. And it's going to teach me something that I didn't know before. That's right. As you talk about mom brain, let us no, first of all, it is a very real thing. Jesus. But it, it, it happens for scientific reasons. You know this? Did, Did you not? know? Okay, let me explain why. Please. Re Here's an aside. No, please. I'm going to have my editor work with me. <laughs> so what happens is the part of the brain that is responsible for memory is also the part of the brain that is responsible for emotional attachment. So in a mom attaching mm. deeply to her child, the memory aspect depletes so that she can have a deeper emotional attachment. I'm just saying, look it up. Oh my God. That uh, is my nerd moment for the so day. So Connor and Dylan and Izzy. It's, it's over. Well, you are double one. Yeah, <laughs> no, you know what word I forgot the other day? The. I believe you. The. I believe you. Yendi, I was so. I, the. <laughs> How do you forget the word the? <laughs> I did. Well, you just mentioned Connor and Dylan. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about your kids. Um, kids. Because that's a whole new game. And that's a whole new game trying to juggle what you do. Mm -hmm. So obviously something had to give at one point mm -hmm. and what gave was mm -hmm. your career. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about mommyhood. How is that for you? I love it. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I know it's cliche, you guys. And I know you always hear mommy say this, but it is the truth. My kids are teaching me so much. The one thing they're teach me is patience. Glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> patience tolerance yeah. they are teaching me that they're teaching me that your ocd mom doesn't work here doesn't we're gonna make a mess yeah. <laughs> constantly and it's gonna be consistently okay. and it's gonna be okay yeah and it's gonna be okay i remember when i was a new mom with connor i used to just every time he messes up something i'd fix it up until no i'm at the space where have fun and when they go to bed that's when i clean up yeah and then it starts again in the morning you know it's just it's just one of those it just things. is what it is it is what it yeah. is but being a mom has really taught me, like I said, patience, tolerance. It's taught me to slow down. Mm -hmm. Dylan taught me to slow down. Because after I had Connor, he, I wanted to, I didn't want to lose myself. I was like, no, I'm not going to lose myself to mommyhood and I'm going to be a mom, but I'm going to be this. And Because I'm one of those crazy people who believe that we can do everything. We're right. women as women. We can do anything right. we want to do. And if that means everything, we can do everything. And I wanted to get back to work and just things just weren't happening. Like I'd hear no left, right and center. And I was like, oh my God, universe, what are you trying to tell me? Still never take the rake. Still yeah. never take the rake. I was just like, you know what? Still going to focus on Connor, but I'm still going to focus on work and get back in the zone and just be me and be who I need to be. But it was still fast. Still fast. Even when I was pregnant with Dylan, I remember I opened a salon. I'm a nail salon where I also learned how to do nails. <laughs> Jellex nails yeah. because I could not find anybody to be what I needed to be there. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'm going to be who I need to be for the salon in that moment. Um, and after I got pregnant again, and, you know, I was like eight months walking around and I started to map it out. Like, okay, it was cool when I had one baby at the salon and he was cool and, you know, but I don't think I can do this with two. Right. So that, that's when I made a decision, you know, I, I spoke to Kareem and we were like, yo, we, what are we going to do? Are we going to sell? Are you going to find somebody to take over? Because I can't do this with two. I can do it with one, but not two. So we ended up selling, which is fine. We sell, sold it to somebody who's amazing, mm -hmm. amazing girl, great spirit. And, you know, she brought back the same energy and the same life to the space. Um, I even got her now to do my nails. Nice. Um, and then after I gave birth to Dylan, which I feel like everybody knows this story now. And I feel like if I talk about it today, I'm going to cry. So I'm not going to go into it too much. But after I had Dylan, Jens, I swear, I went from, you know, when they say you go from zero to 100, I went from 100 to zero. Like I slowed up all the way down. I was able to smell the breeze more. Mm -hmm. I was able to feel the grass more. I was able to feel, to, to hear, like I could have literally heard a fly mm -hmm. like three miles away. Like all my senses were now open and in tune. And during between, so I took the break in 2016, between 2018 and 2019, I went back into studio one and two times. It just never felt like it. 
for those of us who don't know what happened with Dylan, what happened? Whew. Um, so I had placenta accreta at 39 weeks. I scheduled a C-section with her because Connor was a C-section. So I wanted to do VBAC. I wasn't, VBAC is vaginal birth after cesarean. I really, really wanted to experience vaginal birth. Um, my gyne, Daryl, told me straight then, your cervix is too small. Your babies are too big. You carry big babies. I'm sorry. I don't think, I don't want to crush your dreams, you know. But I don't think this one is going to be it because your cervix is so tiny and so narrow. <sighs> Still was hopeful. But at 38 weeks when I wasn't going into labor, and, you know, with the second one, you're actually supposed to labor more quickly than the first. Right. Didn't happen. So I went into the hospital and I was like, let's schedule the C-section, 39 weeks. And went in. And for the first time, that was the first time in my life that I was super, super fearful. I called my bishop. I called, no way I'm going to make my ball. You can't be looking at me like that. <laughs> but I called my bishop the night before and they prayed over me. And they called me the same morning because I had to be up from four because I had to be at the hospital at six. And I called my mom and I was like, I don't, f my spirit feels off. And she was like, what? That's not like you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something. But I still focus because, of course, Sorry, guys, but men really, really cannot hold on the fort without us. So I had to get up early in the morning, make Connor's porridge, make sure that his bags were packed and everything so that daddy wouldn't have any um, ups and downs. And I just felt so off, Jens. Like, like my, my spirit just felt dark. Yeah, that, that's what it was. It felt stagnant. Like, I didn't feel my energy. Um, my bishop prayed over me, um, the whole team. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without Auntie Christine and Tanita prayed over me. Lord's Prayer and Psalm 91. Um, they gave me that prayer, especially after Connor mm -hmm. was born. They're like, this is your prayer. Mm -hmm. Pray it every single time, no matter what, no matter how. When you're feeling good, when you're feeling bad, pray Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. And they did that. And my mom, she prayed over me as well and on the phone. And she was like, you're okay. You're going to be okay. Even, you know, I got the, such a sweet nurse. She was the best. Her name was Gabby. She made sure everything was right. I got the best. I, I, I praise him all the time because he really was the best. Dennis, he was like seven foot tall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But he was the sweetest giant. Yeah. Um, he was my anesthesiologist and he was kind of just going through the motions. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting my spinal tap and then I'm lying on the table and I'm still, you know, like when you hear everything, that so, it sounds cloudy. Yeah. That's how everything sounded to me. Like I just felt like my spirit was blank which was so rare for me, but mm. as I wasn't ignoring it, I was just allowing it to be. Mm. I was like, whatever this is, I'm just going to let it be. And at, I went in on the table at about, I want to say 11.20. Um, she was born at 12.01 p.m. And when she came out, beautiful. I asked her why she looked like her father, because I begged her. I begged her. And I'm like, please, can you look like me? Please. I beg you. Um, of course, the operating theater died. They were like, is that really the first thing you want to say to your doctor? I'm like, yes, it is. Because you're supposed to look like me. I got to um, snuggle her. Because, you know, it's a C-section. You, mm. you can't really do skin to skin too much because you're right. covered. So they put her face against mine and I got to feel her. And just the warmth. I felt like there was a light feeling inside me. And then I noticed that everybody was just taking too long. Like, this isn't supposed to happen. Like, you're supposed to close me up now. Like, well, what's happening? And whew, I saw my doctor come around to the side. And she was literally like World War IV. She was covered in blood. Like, from her neck goes straight down. Like, covered. Like, And her eyes were looking like yours right now. So I'm not going to look at you too much. Because I know, say, if I look at you too long, I'm going to break. Um, her eyes were red and just swollen and she was like we already got you to sign a paper for your clarity you, you, you remember she, she said to me she, she did ask me before i went on the table you remember that paper i asked you to sign just in case of an emergency well this is that emergency and then she went on to tell me that i'm so sorry but you have a situation called placenta accreta it's where your placenta my placenta was embedded so deeply into my womb that they, they were, that's what they've been doing. So for the last, I guess, half an hour, I don't know how long it was, they were trying to get it off. They tried everything. They said it got off. They lifted it, but it just wouldn't come off completely. And of course, you know, if the placenta stays inside you, you die. So I was just like, okay, <laughs> you know, do you think? And she, um, she, that's, sorry. 
it's okay. <laughs> I remember um, her calling her in the room and, you know, he cracked a joke and that was when I lost it. I lost it completely. And um, I remember right as she said that they have to they have to remove my uterus. I was like, I was kind of like, it was so bittersweet because when we were on the way to the, to the hospital, he was like to me, I think this is going to be our last one. And I'm like, oh no, this is definitely going to be our last one because I can't see myself. I really wanted a boy and a girl and I'm so grateful to God that that's what he did. But oh, again, I couldn't do this a third time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the changing diapers and I'm like, no, I can't do this a third time. So we're joking. I'm just saying, you know, I think this is it. And I remember starting to feel, so I wasn't feeling pain, but I started to feel them inside me. I started to feel them inside me. And I was like, yo, you guys need to knock me out right now. You need to knock me out right now. And Dennis, yo, as I said, Dennis, Yandy, I will never forget that man ever. He came to me and he held my head. Cause you know, at this point I can't move. So he held my head and he was like, you know, I'm gonna put in another, you're losing blood. I lost 4.8 liters of blood. Literally almost all the blood in my body. I lost and he told me because my was in my right hand. So he was putting another catheter in my left hand. And that's when he was explaining to me that I have to put back the blood. I have to put it back. And within no time, the blood was there. But I started to feel them like moving around. And I was like, yo, knock me out. Yo, you need to knock me. Knock me out right now. And it was like, yeah, within seconds. Within seconds, I was out. They put a mask on my face. And I was like, out like a light. Um... Woke up, I want to say, yeah, it was like four. So it was about four hours later. Did you think you died? I did. <sighs> Apparently I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I just lost a lot of blood. And it was, the good thing is I got knocked out when I did. And the blood was there. The blood was actually in the hospital that they didn't have to, they didn't have to bring it from somewhere else. It was actually there. So um, I woke up at about 4.30, if I remember correctly, to... All the doctors. No, I started with two doctors in the operating room. Turns out there were actually five. Wow. In the ending, there were five that had to call in for people. And the main, the head doctor, she was just like, you know, I'm so, so, so sorry. I never had to do. Um, no, she never said I'm sorry. But, you know, she was apologetic because right. she, she was like, I never had to, I never had to take a uterus from somebody so young. That's all she was worried about. She's like, I'm, you know, it, 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 I could tell that her heart was broken. I was just like, oh, but I'm good. I'm alive. I'm cool. <laughs> oh, bless you. I'm good. And, you know, just seeing my, and I never got to, what what hurt me the most was it was so different from Connor. Because I remember when I had Connor, you know, I held him. And within like minutes after, Dylan, I never got to see her till like midnight. Because I wanted to save you. Yeah. Until midnight. And I had to beg. I'd, like, no, my auntie had to come in and she was like, yo, she needs to see her kid. Because I was losing it. I was like, yo, I want to see her. Like, I didn't get to, I, I started thinking about, yo, she never got to latch. I never got to hold her. And I just remember my auntie coming in there and, yo, mommy said she bad up the nurse, you know, man. <laughs> that they forget. Bad up the nurse. She's like, yo, go for a wheelchair right now and get her to her. And, yo, and I was so weak because I was packed up on, yeah. I was packed up on painkillers. I was packed up on just drugs. Um, I remember holding her for the first time. Oh my God. It was such an inexplicable feeling. Like, I held her. And yo, she latched. And I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> because what people wouldn't understand is as a mom that's one of your biggest concerns oh like, my they god. give her a bottle and they give her a formula and i can't get to her exactly and then, yeah. exactly and she latched and i was like oh and then i started to fall asleep with her and they were like we'll have to take her away from you know because you know the drugs are kicking and i'm like no just please just please and it could be long and they were like i promise when you wake up in the morning she'll be beside you and yo it was just it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. But ugh, the fact that she latched. <laughs> you don't even understand. Yes, that was everything that meant more to me than anything else. And she, and she was bawling. And the minute she held me, she calmed down. I held oh. her, she calmed down. And I was just like, 
And I had this really ugly red hat on her, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> immediately not you focused on that oh my <laughs> god i was so distraught i just said coming back to the room i'm like please go and get her hat because this is not cute <laughs> at all <laughs> but that whole ordeal <sighs> andy may i tell you say it made me go from a hundred back down to zero it puts life in perspective oh my god like literally you're not in control, ho. <laughs> it's not you. It's not you. Yeah. And, you know, my journey, I've always been a spiritual person. And my journey, you know, getting closer to God started back in 2017. And in that moment, I was just like, okay, God, I see you. No, I see you, my G. I see you. I feel you. I'm here. I am ready to obey you. Mm. A word then. Yeah, man. And... Mm. Came back home, um, you know, just so comfortable and mm. confident in being a mom again for the mm. second mm. time and pouring into my kids even more than I ever had before. And then one day something just click and say, okay, girl, it's time. I literally heard a voice say it's time. Mm. I don't know. I swear to you. And in my head, I'm like, okay. After I heard it's time, I'm like, but well, you can't do this by yourself. It can't be like last time. You can't be doing it by because because you know between 2016 and 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 2020, I still had a presence, just right. not musically. Right. It was more TV stuff and and ambassadorships and things. Right. So I was like, you can't do this by yourself. You need people in your circle now yes. that not only understand your vision but can also take that vision, make it their own and propel you even further. Yes. Believe in your vision just as much, if not more than you believe in it. And I remembered the first person that popped into my head was Zoom. Worked with him in 2016. We had such great chemistry working on Proud Wifey. And just the way him talk, him talk like one old Buddha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of them Monday. <laughs> and I remember calling him the day and I'm like, yo, I know say you did done with music, but... I'm ready to be back and I have a proposition. And the man literally said, yo, anything you need. Mega give Sasha your number. Anything you need. Say less. And that's when the journey started. And then guess what? I never knew it was my Sasha. I thought it was some different Sasha. When I so spoke, when I when Sasha finally called me and I'm saying like, what hold on? This is my Sasha. It was just like, <laughs> okay. Okay, God, yes, yes. I see you. But of course, before I made the decision, you know, I spoke to Auntie Christine, I spoke to Tanida, I spoke to God himself, and I was just like, okay, this is what I'm about to do. If it is not your will, mm -hmm. shh, flip me left. Mm -hmm. But if it is your will, flip me right. Him flip me right still, so. <laughs> but it's <laughs> so apparent. So for those of us who are looking on, it's, it's for, for me, it's been beautiful to see because I feel like you have stepped out in, I feel like you're more assured than you've ever been. Uh -uh. I feel like you are glowing more than you've ever glowed. And you know, say so you're glowing a long time. Boom. But also, I feel like <laughs> I am looking at you and I'm like, yeah, she's, she, she's like, it's no or never. This is all of me. I can, I feel like I'm seeing you put you all everything, on the table. Everything. I see it. It's everything. I'm so happy yeah. that you actually feel that because that just shows that I'm actually doing it. Yeah. Because sometimes I think I'm, maybe I'm still being a little bit inhibited, but yeah. the fact that you said that is like, okay, yeah, girl. I yeah, think I it's thing. really apparent to all of us <laughs> who have been followers of you, supporters yeah. of you, who know you from day one. Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, man, this look different. This look good. <laughs> this feel good. Yeah. I, I love this for her. Yes, for love all this of for this. <laughs> <laughs> where, where does Denique want music to take her? Where do you want to go ultimately? So there's this little planet between yeah. Mars and Venus. Yeah. That's where I want to be. Got you. That's exactly where out I want of this to be. world. Just out of this world. <laughs> Within the galaxy. Yeah. Um, to for me, success is not about it's not about material things for me. Success for me is literally happiness, mm -hmm. and my happiness and my confidence because I I literally do the work on myself. It comes from within. Yes. So, the more successful I am, the it should be the more happy I am. And if that's not the case, then we have to go reset. 
but go reset and figure out, okay, what's going to happen next. But the limit, there's no limit. Yeah. I don't think there's a limit. I remember saying in high school that the sky is not the limit. The limit is beyond the sky. And I've come to now take that more seriously than I did back then. I, yeah. I just said it because I thought it was cool and I came up with it myself. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've actually taken like, it no, more seriously. Real, like, yeah. wow. Like, oh, you were a little Buddha back in the day. Listen, though. But yeah, no. Oh, um, no. Um, <laughs> for real now it's like there's no yeah. limit yeah there's no limit to what you can do there's no limit to what i can do it's it's now and this is me this is who i am take it or leave it oh just like we were talking about earlier you don't like what i'm wearing that's okay babe it's okay it's okay it's okay you don't like certain things that i say that's okay i used to be like that you don't want everybody to love me and so i'm and then i got over that really quickly i was just like that's okay and it's okay yeah. i reassure people all the time it's okay that you don't like me. It's okay. But you're going to respect me. Ooh. A word. That's what it is. Mm. So you cannot like me all you want. You not liking me has nothing to do with me. That's all you. That's all you. That's a you problem. That's right. But you will respect me. That's right. That's right. What do you say to the new mom Ooh. who is watching this and feels like she's lost herself? she has lost her identity she she wants to feel like she's not just living for her children and not she also wants to not feel guilty for wanting to live her life for her what do you say to her stop listening to everybody that tells you that you can't stop listening to everybody tells you that oh i thought you were a mom why are you wearing that or why are you doing this stop stop for a minute sit back what do i want it's not, it's okay to be selfish. That it's part. okay to be selfish. We've been taught. I remember I was taught that selfish was a bad word. It was a negative word that it's not okay to be selfish. It's okay to be selfish because selfish literally means you're just putting yourself first. And that's okay. That part. Look at all that you've done. Look at all of you. you. You carried a human being for nine months. And I tell all my moms this, you literally, your organs... Itch up under your rib cage. Right, right up. For nine months. Nine, they nine. They picnic kick you in your heart. And your tribe. <laughs> for so long. Poor spleen. You probably had a tear if you had vaginal birth. Stitch, stitch. You had a C-section, so you have a scar. Still can't cough. Oh, my God. I sneezed the other night. You ended Jesus, please. My stress up. I say blinky. Head top. Oh, my God. Go so toot, 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 toot. Oh. Yes, man. Think about all of mm. those things. Yes, and then think about how people make it worse by saying things like, oh, when are you going to have another baby? Or, oh, well, um, you can't do that. Because the think about all pressures. of those things. Yeah. And then mute it. Mute all of those noises. And then think, but what do I want to do? Yes. What's my dream? What's my goal? What do I want to accomplish? It's okay. Literally. Like I was telling Yendi earlier, God me my kids everybody else yeah that's it that's the format god kids my husband everybody else after that because i am the captain of the ship and if i'm not okay the ship cannot sail mm -hmm. because nobody else is qualified to sail the ship if i'm not okay how can you be okay how can i make everybody else okay it don't make no sense yo yens i remember i used to be team no sleep no no team sleep no, we going to get some sleep. I'm on that team with no, you. No, girl, we going to nap. 7.30. Ah. Okay, no, y'all go too early. <laughs> 7.30? Yeti. No. You better stop that judgment. Oh, my gosh. Listen, <laughs> the way how I start, y'all, 7 o'clock in the eye. Worst Christmas time when the sun go down earlier. I'm over you. 6.30. No, <sighs> no, 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 no. Trouble day day. No, but... But I'm team also sleep, team about rest. team rest. Yes. And listen, ladies, defy all the odds. Defy every single societal norm that they've told you that you're a mom or you're a wife or you're a this and you can be. You can be whatever you want to be. Now, of course, there are parameters. You're not going to, you know, do certain things. But at the same time, you have to decide what those parameters are for you. Yes. Don't allow outside noises to tell you, oh, because you've been a teller, for 10 years, you can't be a singer. Right. Or you can't be an accountant. You can literally be what you want to be. That's right. You can be all of those things at once. But you also have to remember that something is going to suffer. And that's okay. 
you're going to fail at something and that's okay. Sometimes when I'm working, I'm actually, I, I wouldn't say failing, but I'm not at my highest level at being mommy, but that's okay. Because when I'm not working, I'm at my highest level at being mommy. So it's balance. It's all about remembering what's important, prioritizing and understanding that you, you are the center of it all. So you're not the leader and you're not, you're, you're just the center. That's right. The center is the most important place to be. That's right. If I were to ask you for your top three life hacks, what would you say are the three things that carry you through in life? The best advice you could give, the top three. Now for your Sagicor life hacks. Mm, 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 mm. Prayer. Prayer is my number one life hack. Like I remember my mother used to tell me all the time, prayer works, prayer works, prayer works. Uh, didn't believe her. No, I do. Yeah. Number one life hack. Number two, content over everything. Okay. Whatever you're doing in life, we're in that generation now. Just whatever you're doing in life that you love, especially if it needs attention. You know, if you do what Yendi do, if you do what I do, it's it's content over everything. Life hack. And third one, pick me a big people something. Me <laughs> <laughs> big, 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 big people. Marriage and kids, big people. So, but yeah. no, 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 no. Um, on, a, on a real, on a real, my third life hack would have to be <laughs> um, account, being accountable. So I have this thing that I use. I always talk about it because it's so important. It's recognize, decide, commit, and evolve. When you recognize that there's an issue, you decide, am I, am I going to fix it? Or am I not going to fix it? Whatever decision you make, you have to commit to that decision. Mm. So if you decide, so you recognize, okay, I am a procrastinator. You decide you want to fix it. No, you have to commit to fixing it. You have to commit to fixing it because that's what's going to make the difference. When you recognize it and you just see it, it's just like, oh yeah, I know it's there, but I'm not really doing the work. Yes. But when you decide that you're going to do the work, you have to make the commitment to do it. And in, in every single commitment, you're going to fall back. There are certain times when you're going to fall like 10 steps back, eight steps back, two steps back. That's okay. What if you had taken 20 steps forward? Ooh. So if you've taken 20 steps forward and you fall 10 steps back, you're still you're 10 still steps further than you were before. So that's my third life hack that I think everybody really needs to kind of, I wish everybody would just take the time Tell and just be more again. aware. Recognize, yes. decide, commit, evolve. Ooh. Mm -hmm. A word then. I've been using this on myself for so many years. Aren't you also very artistic? Sometimes. Yeah? How artistic are you? On the mood. On the mood. I haven't painted in so long, but I used to paint, I used to draw. Yeah? Yeah, I was an arts baby. My yeah. dad wanted me to be a doctor, but, you know, yeah. I like science. But right but... brain is where you went. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have a little game I'm going to play with you. Oh, my God. Is it? Oh, my God. Yes. I don't like this. No, you're going to love this. I don't like this. <laughs> This is the MasterCard Priceless Moment. So here is your game, yo. <laughs> she look like she wants to cry. <laughs> uh, or her thump me. You better stop that. <gasps> okay, so okay. you have in your hand a blindfold. No. It's not what it is. No, no, no. It is. No, this can't. You know, see how my head big? This can't fit over me. Oh, no, it can't fit. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're going to do Poppy is... Poppy show you that we're fine. No, sir. <laughs> it's love and love and love. <laughs> Come. I am going to name something and you're yeah. going to have to draw it. With this over my face? With your mask no. on. Yes. No. That's why you asked me the artsy question. <clears throat> you're a puke. Or a juke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just rhymed. It just rhymed. <laughs> so just please, to put on your mocks. This is not nice. Hold on. Let me map out where the thing is. Your, uh, yeah. yeah. Look, I even give you something to press on my Yeah, man. Go on about your business. No, sir. I love you. Yeah, man. Go on about your business. It's, it's, it's this part for me. <laughs> You know what I feel like? <laughs> I feel like, you remember that movie? I feel like something out of that. Some, I don't like this. I don't like this. Sash. I don't like this. A whole mess. All right, so. Okay. Hold on, let me make sure this is done. Thank you. Okay. She can't see. Okay. I can't. I can't see sh anything. <laughs> Can you please draw a flower? Wow. Easy. No, not easy. Hold on. Easy, easy. Hold on. 
Oh, that is so good. Shut up your mouth. It's true. You can't take off your marks. <laughs> Here is her flower. Oh my God. Yo, you never see what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a bird. Okay. Some demon now, bird. Now, okay. can you please draw? Mm -hmm. Right here. Mm -hmm. Why right here? I want to draw down here. Okay, all, all right, go down there. Must just try to avoid the flowers. Oh, okay. Can you please now draw mm -hmm. a stick man? A stick man? Yes, man. Like one of them hangman man there? Yes, man. Oh, that one. Box cover now. All right, hold on. Right, let me see if I can. Jesus wept. She's so good. <laughs> I feel like my stick man. Oh, you're off. so good. Then, this is genius. He's Truly, off. you're Picasso. Oh. I prefer Da Vinci, but okay. So good. Okay. Oh, Da Vinci. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Now your last drawing is. Andy. Please draw. Andy. Connor and Dylan. Ah! <laughs> you're a mess. <laughs> you are a whole mess. Mm -mm. If you want, I can give you some. I don't music. like that. You know, some background music. I don't like that. Come man. They're gonna be stick. That's what it's gonna okay. Do. All right. We're okay. going to draw the kids. All right. Just hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Feeling for the edge. <laughs> uh -uh, just to make sure. Okay. All right. All right. Drawing the kids. This is not fair. Oh, you know what? Say, I must draw Connor and Dylan. No problem. Oh, she's a genius. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> You are easily the samples. Take off your mask. Look what she did. A whole genius. She said, you didn't specify. She drew Connor and Dylan. A whole genius. Oh, you're my stick man. Look good for me. Yes. Yo. Ah. And your flowers. Ah, no. no, flowers look kind of handicapped. It's, well, fall season. You know what it look like? You remember the flowers from Super Mario, but sideways? Yes. Like a man eating one. Yeah. It's true, this one. Yeah. Ah, uh, then. Um, when this whole thing is said and done, mm -hmm. what does Denique want to be remembered for the most? I want to be remembered as the person that inspired others to be, to be themselves, to be their best, and not be the best. Yeah. So there's Ooh. a difference. Yes. Mm. I think people try so hard to be the best. You don't have to be the best but be your best. Like, who is your best? So I want to be remembered. My legacy, I was always the one just, yo, if it can be done, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way and I'm going to do it. But honestly, just an inspiration. I want people to look at me and say, yo, because of her, I was able to do this. Even if it's from afar. Even if it's somebody with me don't know. Even if it's a silent admirer is just saying, yo, you don't even understand how... Your energy mm. has positively affected me. Mm. That's what I want to be. Your before. favorite collaboration. Mm. Wow. Oh, God. There's two. Go on. Give There's me two. them. There's two. Okay. So the first one is an oldie. What's love got to do with it? Yes. Mm-hmm. What's love? What about love with um, me and Chino? Yes. And what about love? It's just a little thing. No? Okay, I'll stop now. Let me start. Okay. Let me start and you finish. You ready? Right. What about love? It's just enough. <laughs> That's where I lip sync because she don't block me. <laughs> and my second one is definitely same guy. Yes. Definitely same guy. Let me, let me, this one is um, alongside sexy Denise. That's your favorite one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> same guy with um, Chanel. Mior. Chanel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a hit. Thank a you. Whole hit. Listen, did not know it would do what it did. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. thought it was just such a fun song. I remember hearing We're the beats. Yeah, the that, that was the first line I came up with. That's the same. Uh, we messing with the same damn boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we formulated the whole idea, the whole concept after that. After that line, we formulated the concept around that line. I was like to her, I'm like, yo. This is the line. Because I, I sang it out loud. Yeah. We messing with the same damn boy, yeah. And I swear I didn't know that he was seeing you. And I was like, yo, we're not going to fight over the man. Empowerment. We're going to done him. We're going to team up. Of course, we know that doesn't happen in real life. But <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to dream. Favorite food? So many. Wow. Give me the first one. 
First one, potato salad. Favorite color? Red. Favorite place to go for a chill day? Ooh, my backyard. Favorite book? Mmm, mmm, too many, but my, my most recent favorite is The Year of Yes. Yes, the Shonda Rhimes. Shonda, girl. That was a good book. Ooh. I love that read as well. Mm. Favorite song that's not yours? So many, so, so, so many, but if I had to choose one. And if I ever fall in love again, I will be sure that the lady is a friend. <laughs> yes, shy if I ever fall in love. And last but not least, what is your mantra? My mantra. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. Every day, like clockwork. Psalm 91, verse 4. <laughs> and it is well, because Tanida kind of just beat that in my head. Because I'm such a, I, well, I still am a little bit of a warrior, but I was so bad. Like three years ago, I was like really, really, and she kept saying to me then, it, it is, is well. well. It is well. It is well. But he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Den. Thank I'm you, Mama. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. I just love you bad. But you know that long yeah, time. Me too. Long, long time. Long time. <sighs> feel that? Oh, you feel that? I do. It's, ah. it's calling me. It said, no, take off your shoes and come and lie down. Same way, so. Mm -hmm. Then go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys was brought to you in partnership with Sagicor and MasterCard. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life.